Hey guys, Caleb here. So I thought while well, I had the free time with all the stay-at-home orders and my normal week off work, I'd catch up on some videos and I just posted another one about a new Ruger Blackhawk I picked up. But a week before that, I had a little bit of some overtime and a little bit of a bonus check from work where I did some extra training and I thought I would pick up a new toy and I literally was picked up as a toy. I really don't see a intended practical purpose. I mean, it is a firearm. It would still do the job at a pinch if needed to be for most anything. But it was also something I thought was cool. I grew up on westerns and toys and lever action. So I thought I'd combine the three and get what I kind of wanted for a while. And that was a Henry Mare's leg. And as you can see, doesn't really look like, look like any of the other Henry Mare's leg. I had to do a little bit of customizing to it because I can't really find myself capable of owning the same thing as somebody else. This actually started out as a Henry 22 Mag Mare's leg, but it now has the Henry Evil Roy nickel polished receiver cover, and the front barrel band was actually just coated with the, the black paint they put on it. So I actually just stripped it off and wire wheeled it off and polished it back up. So it gives it the silver finish. The front barrel band still has the blue on it with the front sight. I did take the front sight hood off. I thought it looked kind of ridiculous on the mare's leg. Not really a highly accurate system anyway. So, but overall, the gun's very, very high quality. I paid about 387 for tax. I think after tax, it came out just a, like a $20 bill over $400. So it wasn't really all that bad. The receiver cover was $40 directly from Henry. The screws, to the silver screws to match the receiver cover were $10. Said the front barrel band I polished up myself, so that didn't cost me anything. So altogether, I think I'm about 460 or so in it. It's just a fun little toy, something for the kid, me and the kids to have fun shooting. I got it in 22 mags, a little bit of a step up over 22 long rifle. I kind of always wanted a 22 mag. I never actually owned one. I got plenty of other 22s, so I thought I'd go ahead and get it in that. It does give it a little bit more of a punch. 22 mag actually has some pretty good ballistics, especially if you consider it's got a 12.9, almost 13 inch barrel on this mare's leg. So it's actually pretty accurate, capable, pretty accurate capabilities. And it's also got pretty good wallop behind it. One thing I did notice and I wasn't particularly fond of is if you order the new Eva Roy cover, it doesn't have a saddle ring, which the original one did. I'll show you that. I have it here on the table with me, which I, I'm probably being critical because I really didn't like the way the saddle ring rattled, clanked around on the gun, but it was cool to have. Here's the original receiver cover. And you can literally see it's just a cover. There's one, two, three, four, and then five screws to hold this entire cover on you can lift it off the other one came the same it was just shining and you slide it back in place one thing that i had to learn after calling henry is the golden boys and the frontiers are not actually they do not share receiver covers i actually wanted the golden receiver cover but the golden boy has a steeper stock angle and it's just a completely different cover altogether so if you do have a standard blued painted henry and you want the shiny receiver cover you can get the one for the evil roy that one will fit on it that will also fit on the frontiers and there's probably several others you have to call henry to verify if you have a question on those though but i do know frontiers and the standards they will fit on receiver covers are 40 dollars. i think these are pretty much the same price they're made out of the same metal it's an aluminum alloy with a combination of brass and zinc and nickel and couple other different <clears throat> metals in there. I think they call it Zamac 5. It's pretty, when polished in barrel band, it's pretty soft stuff, but it does take a pretty good polish. It seems like it's holding up pretty good. This is another one I haven't actually shot it either. I've been very busy with work and now with all the other stuff going on, I haven't had a chance to do that much. I'm hoping to remedy that this weekend as long as the weather cooperates. North Dakota dumped about four inches of snow on us again. So that made for some great, uh, great enjoyable weather today. So one of the reasons I did pick the 22 mag also is it's kind of hard to tell, but it has 
checkered has checkering on both ends that I thought looked a little bit better that the standard 22 mags didn't. So other than that, it's dimensionally identical to the 22 long rifle. The quality of the wood on it is amazing. I'm actually very, very impressed for the little amount that they wanted for it. The fit, one of my favorite things, and it's a very critical thing, is the fit between the butt pad and the butt stock itself is literally flawless. You cannot feel a single line out of place or anything. The fit between the receiver, even the additional receiver cover I put on it, is perfect on all the way around. I mean, there's no gaps, there's no edges, there's no wiggle, there's no vibrations. Same thing with up here, right around the foregrip, it's perfect. Where the barrel band goes through, is perfect. The Basically, the only part on the gun is blued, is the barrel, the hammer, the lever, and the trigger, and the magazine tube. But uh, the bottom side is the same aluminum alloy. You can see it's still black. If I really wanted to, I could strip it down and polish it. But they actually did a pretty good job polishing it, and the paint actually doesn't look that bad. So I think the contrast helps a little bit. Also, when you're looking at it like this, you don't really see it a whole lot anyway. So I said it was just a toy. It's been previously unloaded. I've, I've never even loaded around into the gun. But, I mean, the action is just flawless. The big loop lever makes it for a nice novelty as far as holding it and cycling it. It actually, to me, I don't think it's as good as a standard small level lever, but I'll probably keep it on there just for the looks of it. I said, I mean, the weight, I believe, is somewhere around about 5 pounds, 4.9, 5 pounds. So it's not exactly lightweight, but it's pretty handy, pretty fun little toy to throw around and stuff. Throw some rounds to this weekend, let everybody know how it goes. I'm not expecting to have any problems on that front. Henry seems to make some pretty good stuff. Their base model stuff, I'm not impressed with the finish because one of the things I really, really didn't like, I have another friend who's, he picked up a Henry in a raffle a while back and we were shooting it. And one of the things, if you look at the receiver cover, see if I can catch the light just right, you don't really see as much on camera, but if you look it up, close and personal it's got what's called referred to as orange peel in the automotive world the finish it looks like crap it doesn't look like it was polished that good and it looks like they slapped some cheap black paint over it so that's the one thing i don't care for on the henry's so that's one of the biggest reasons i wanted to upgrade to the polished receiver i just think it looks better there's one other gentleman on youtube that has kind of done the same thing i kind of got the idea from him but I don't know him personally. I just seen the video and commented with him a couple times. Decided to kind of go down the same path. I do plan on putting some leather leather wrapping on the hammer or lever just for appearance sake and stuff like that. And I've debated on putting some kind of leather sling, but I'm also halfway debating if I want to put some kind of holster on it just to be different. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. The bulk of it is it's a Henry. It runs good. I didn't have any problems. I called Henry when I wanted to order the parts. I called him, I think it was first thing on the right at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning. I had the parts by Thursday or Friday. They shipped them out, it was $10 shipping, so that's about fair. The parts fit perfect, the screws fit perfect, everything went in with no problems. I didn't have any issues. I watched a video or two on YouTube and I think I read an article about it online. Pretty crafty with a gun and a screwdriver though, so it wasn't really all that hard. I did oil everything up while I was in there to make sure everything was the way it was supposed to be and stuff. And I couldn't find anything out of place it wasn't supposed to be. There was a couple little casting marks on the actual bolt itself, but it wasn't anything that was going to affect function by any means. It was one tiny little casting mark. And a 22 mag is not going to kick out enough energy that it's going to crack that bolt or shatter that bolt by no means anyway. And talking about heavy caliber, you know, element gun type stuff, we might have reason to be concerned, but there's a reason those guns don't usually come in under the $400 mark because there's a lot more engineering that goes into them. So, if you are looking at them, the Henry's can be kind of hard to find. I happen to find it on the Gallery of Guns, Gun Genie, Davidson's, whatever name you want to call it. They did have them in stock. I'm pretty sure I got close to getting one of the last ones because now they're out of stock. And now it's hard to get anything through them because of how busy they are with the coronavirus and everybody buying everything, which is a completely separate issue. I'm not getting into that. It's not about politics. It's about guns. 
So, so if you have any questions on it, feel free to post a comment. This is just a little quick overview. It's I'll try to get some updated video of me shooting it if I can am able to do that. A lot of it just depends on how things go. But just it was a quick little project gun, a little toy to play with, and it's probably gonna wind up sticking over the mantle just as a decoration. But good little fun little gun to have around. Set in a pinch if you come down to it. A 22 mag will do the job for just about anything, especially living in an apartment. It's nice to know that we're not going to have to worry about that much over penetration if that's what it comes down to. It. That being said, it's probably not the first thing I'd ever grab. In a pinch, it would work, but I do have some other handguns and a little Remington Model 11 that would probably be a lot more effective. So, if you guys have any questions, need more information, Henry has a great website on it. Feel free to ask me if you need to. Uh, that's all I needed. Thank you guys.